First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello everyone, this is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler, I wanted to pull that up. That is an awesome shot of Mount Hood that we have right now from our ski bowl camera. It is looking nice up there, and if you are watching live, I believe it's supposed to get to about 89 degrees this afternoon, at least uh, according to the latest forecast that I checked at kptv.com, so definitely be aware of that. But that mountain is also a good reminder of something else that we're gonna be talking about here during this segment. And again, we are live streaming here every weekday starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, and we go throughout the afternoon covering a wide range of topics. We're on our social media, Media channels. We're of course on our website and our apps, so lots of places to find the show and watch these segments afterward. But that mountain, as I mentioned, is a reminder that uh, Oregon and the Northwest is very geologically active for a number of reasons, and that includes the ability to have geothermal heat. And that's what we're going to be discussing, geothermal energy. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the research going into that, how it's being utilized here in the Northwest, and just get a better understanding of what the future potential could be. And to do so, from the Oregon Department of Energy, we have Senior Policy Analyst Rob Delmar joining us. And Rob, thank you very much for, for being here today. I noticed that there were some new, um, some new submissions for potential funding to expand research into geothermal energy, and uh, this is something that's, that's working its way through right now, and I thought, you know what, why don't we dig into that a little bit more and get a better understanding of, of what that exactly is and how it's being utilized, and so that's why uh, we appreciate you being here, and I think to start off, could you give us just the actual definition of what geothermal energy is? Sure, yeah, thanks Greg for having me on, and happy to be talking about geothermal energy. And technically, geothermal energy is just the energy that comes from the hot rock and hot water aquifers that exist beneath the ground. And in Oregon, we have a lot of these. And it's because, as you mentioned, we have a lot of active geologic areas with volcanic activity. And so, especially in the central and eastern parts of the state, there's a lot of this hot rock and hot water beneath the surface, and that can be harnessed to generate energy for us to use. So when we think about going out to a hot springs, that would be a good example? Hot springs are a perfect example of when it's no longer beneath the surface, but comes bubbling right out at the surface. And that's where places like Oregon and some other Western states are kind of unique in that we have this resource available at much shallower depths than in many other places across the country. And I think that's that's a good point there. Yes, yeah, since Oregon and the Northwest, because we are so, and that's I assume because we are so geologically active. I mean, volcanoes and 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 stuff going on underneath the surface. That that's what's causing that. That's right. Yeah, and in the case of hot springs, it's right at the surface. And in other parts of the state, you might have to go down a hundred feet or a thousand feet. But even that is a much more accessible resource than what you have in a lot of the rest of the country where if you drill deep enough, you're gonna find hot rock, but you might be drilling for miles in other parts of the country. And in Oregon, we have a lot of these hot rock and hot water resources that are within easy drilling depths. And so when we look at that, you know, contrast from going out to the hot springs for the stuff that's at the surface for a day, I get, uh, there's, that's one thing, but tapping in it into this as an energy resource. So you drill down, you tap into this hot water. How does that work? And I guess, can you walk us through the process of what exactly, what exactly you would do to harness that energy? Sure, yeah. And um, in Oregon, there's been a lot of creative use of geothermal energy. And what a lot of people think about initially is a geothermal power plant. And a good example of that is what we have operating in Vail, Oregon, um, at the Neil Hot Springs. Um, Oregon Tech in Klamath Falls has also been operating a geothermal power plant for many years. And that's when you take that hot water, and if it's hot enough to just flash into steam, you can run it through a steam turbine and make electricity. Or if it's not quite hot enough to turn into steam, then you can still run it through what they call a binary cycle to generate electricity. And so that's one of the uses is electricity generation. But there's a lot you can do with it that's not having to do with electricity generation. And that would be just direct use of that hot water for space heating or industrial processes. Um, Klamath Falls and Lakeview, that those towns both make use of geothermal energy 
to heat their um, municipal buildings or to heat swimming pools. In some cases, it's been used for agricultural purposes. Um, in Lake County, the Warner Creek Correctional Facility has been using geothermal heating and geothermal domestic hot water for um, for many years. And so um, they put this energy to good use. And so we've seen it being utilized in those places, and I think that's really fascinating using it for municipal buildings, excuse me, and a number of things like that. We do have um, here, I've got a map here I was I pulled up, and this is through the Oregon Department of Energy website, so uh, I linked to it. But this is showing, I guess, a lot of what the geothermal activity is, or use cases in Oregon. And Rob, maybe you can explain what we're looking at here, because we see all these blue triangles. I'll try to zoom in on some of this and just show what we're talking about. But what does that represent when we're we're talking about geothermal use. Yeah, so this is a map that we have linked from our website, but it's actually put together by Dogami, and that's the Department of Geolo Geology and Mineral Industries. And they have essentially assembled a map showing all of the wells in the state that have some geothermal energy associated with them. And so all of those little blue dots represent wells that are hotter than what you would expect to get with normal groundwater, which might be somewhere between 40 and 50 degrees. Many of those wells might only be 60 or 70 degrees, but they still technically have geothermal heat associated with them. And others come out of the ground at um, 200 degrees. And so there's a lot of variability in the resource. But just by looking at that map, you can see that Oregon is loaded with um, geothermal resources. Yeah, there is a lot being shown here. And I think something that you know was interesting to me that I didn't even realize, even here in the Portland area, there's a number of these that are, that are built in. Because you mentioned, uh, obviously, Central Oregon um, and Southern Oregon having a lot of this. But it looks like, to me, that, that that would seem that there's a lot of potential even on this side of the Cascades. Yeah, and the, the resources that have been identified for true energy production or for direct use, space heating, things like that, are predominantly in central and eastern Oregon. And so you're actually able to click on some of those dots, and not all of them are populated with all of the data that they could that they could have. But the ones that you find in the valley are primarily lower temperature wells and you really need to get down into Klamath County, Lake County, Malheur County. Um, that's where we find the really hot water um, in, in some of those wells. And we're taking a look here just to show this to you, just to get the, this idea and the representation, I think, for everybody to understand where it's at. So these pink sections, these are the ones that you're talking about where this is the, the stuff where you can actually harness and, and create energy. Those pink areas are where they have found known resources with much hotter water that can be used for space heating or electricity production. And um, a few of those areas have had development like you see around Lakeview and Klamath Falls. And um, some of them are proposed for future developments like um, the Newberry Crater um, just, to the, just to the south of Bend. Um, that's essentially an active volcano with a tremendous um, hot rock resource not very far below the surface. And that is an area where they are looking at developing a project in the, probably within the next decade. And so I think that kind of leads to my next question is, you know, it's being utilized, as you mentioned, in Klamath Falls and a few other places. What are the inhibiting factors from keeping this being used in other locations around Oregon so far? So the biggest hurdle for geothermal energy development has been upfront cost and risk. And traditional geothermal energy projects that generate electricity, to, to do that right, you really need to find a hot water source. And so you drill down and it's a little bit of guesswork to find a really good hot water source and to get hot water with enough temperature and flow to bring up to the surface and generate electricity. And you could drill a well and be, um, you know, not very far off and miss the water. But very often you'll at least hit hot rock. And that's where kind of the, the next most promising developments are. And that's what we're gonna see at Newberry Crater 
and that they call enhanced geothermal. And with enhanced geothermal, all you need is the hot rock. You don't have to find the water. So there's a lot less risk in drilling those early wells to find that resource. And the idea with enhanced geothermal is you, you'll drill a well and then around it, you'll drill some other wells and you'll, you'll provide the water at the surface and you'll pump that water down one well and let it travel through the fractured rock and it'll come back up the adjacent wells until you, you essentially create sort of a, an artificial aquifer um, and you, you provide the water and the earth provides the heat. And in this way, you remove a lot of that risk. And so these enhanced geothermal systems um, have a lot of potential in places like Oregon, where we know you're going to find some hot rock. Um, so that's probably the most, most promising development opportunity in geothermal that we see for the next few years. And that's the one that they're going to be trying out there at the Newberry Crater, if that's correct? Yep. And at Newberry Crater, they've already drilled some wells and they've already proven the technology with some flow through the hot rock. And the next step is to take those test wells and turn them into an actual facility generating energy. And so, with, so exciting. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, so, so with the advancement in technology and research and the ability to go down and do these enhanced geothermal wells and energy centers, what's the potential for this actually being expanded and utilized in Oregon in a bigger scale? Yeah, that's a good question. And the future development really depends on whether or not the industry can get those prices down to make it cost competitive with other energy resources. And in the future, as energy prices continue to tick up, if geothermal prices tick down, at some point we'll reach a spot where, where they are cost competitive. And, you know, um, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Boulder, Colorado, known as NREL, they've actually recently completed a study looking at enhanced geothermal potential in a number of different states. And in Oregon, they found a lot of potential. And they say by 2035, we could have over 3,000 megawatts of, of energy which is a lot, it's more than all the solar in the state right now. And by 2050, they say it could be 8,000 megawatts. And I know those are kind of funny units, but we can just say that that is a significant share of, um, of clean energy for Oregon if these projects can be developed cost-effectively. Wow, yeah, that's huge if they can, if they'd be able to do that basically within the next 25 years or so. Um, yeah, that's tremendous. Well, uh, anything else that you think is important for people to know just about the research that you're doing and understanding geothermal energy and the potential of it? No, I don't think so. I would just encourage people to, to pay attention to the geothermal industry in Oregon. It's got great potential to bring um, you know, projects to some of the more disadvantaged parts of the state where you can take a, a, a you know, good resource that hasn't been harnessed in the past and turn it into a good um, clean energy project that's going to generate revenue for a community. And um, I think there's just a lot of great potential for Central and Eastern Oregon, especially in the coming years. Well, Rob, thank you very much for joining us here today to talk about this. I appreciate the, the information and just, you know, it's one of the things we like to do here is just learn more about a, a topic that you know, I'm familiar with the term geothermal energy, but it wasn't familiar with all the things that you just explained to us to understand that. So um, pretty exciting stuff about what this could bring. And thanks, Rob, for joining us here today to walk us all through that. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks, Greg, for having us on. For having you bet. Me on. And right. for, yeah, have a good one. And for everybody watching too, uh, this is Fox 12 Now. We're live here every weekday and we cover a wide, wide range of topics. It could be breaking news. If that happens, we'll be right here for you. It could be segments like this, exploring something that could be a potential benefit to everybody. Um, sometimes we have celebrity guests. You know, it's just all over the board and that's what we get to do here. We get to do these deeper dives as well. So thanks for joining us. Coming up at 1.30 p.m. We're going to switch gears. If you watch this show every uh, week, every week, then you know on Thursdays we've got Eric Gordonson from Around the House Northwest who's going to give us a preview of this week's episode, plus talk about exterior paint the weather is nice outside, so I think a lot of people are thinking about that as well. Um, I do want to just do a quick programming note. So if you are watching our regular Fox 12 Oregon channel, thank you. There will be no 4, 5, and 6 p.m. regular news over the air today. We've got, as you probably know, Euro soccer playing, but there will be a live stream only version of the 5 p.m. news. So that's going to be something that you can tune into for that.
probably right here where you're watching me, if you're watching on the app or the website. But we'll, we'll take off right now. We're just going to regroup. We're going to come back at 1.30 p.m. I'll talk to you then. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.